Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Today I'm going to be working on that Wood Magazine piano keyboard cutting board. Uh, let's get started. So I just downloaded this off the internet from the wood store. There, it was about $7.95 plus tax. And the first thing you got to do is get out some stock like this. And for a rough cut, we want six pieces of maple, three quarter by one and five eighths by 26. And the same with, uh, uh, with some walnut. And uh, this is gonna end up being one and a half after we glue the veneers on. I got some veneers here to, to uh, glue in between the keys here. So I'm not gonna bore you with all the, just milling this to size with a joiner and planer. Uh, I'm just gonna get back to you once I'm ready for the glue up. Okay, so that took about 45 minutes to process that wood. I did that on the table saw, and frequent viewers of my channel know I do this on the, the planer and the joiner. And I made extra pieces in case I mess up, or if I wanna make another one. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, I didn't like the walnut veneer that I had in here, so I ordered some and I got some these veneers from B&B &B Rare Woods in Arveda, Colorado. And I need those, that veneer, I bought some ebony, or I should say some black veneer, black dyed veneer. There. Oh, cool. So four pieces, and these are gonna go between like this. And in order to get them to length, I'm going to be using my veneer saw. And I'll show you how to do that right now. That's a two. It's nice to use this backer piece of masonite and a taller fence. I've got this big piece of specter plywood, which was a good backer board. It's nice and heavy. And that's how you cut veneer. Okay, I'll cut these all up. Let's see, I have about 10 pieces, and I'm getting that black divining line that I wanted to get. When I had the walnut veneer, it just wasn't enough contrast. So uh, we're gonna do it this way. Now all I gotta do is glue these up and I'll be done for the day. Okie dokie. All right, ready for the glue up. I got uh, my piece of masonite, I covered that with paper towel. I'm using type on three since this is a cutting board. I like using mustard containers as auxiliary smaller bottles. I'm gonna glue these up three at a time. All right, that's the first one. And this is the second one. And we're 
getting that dividing line that I wanted. So uh, I think it's going to work out. Just going to let it dry overnight. And in the meantime, I got other projects to do. Okay, it's a couple days later. I just took these out of the clamps. I got some corrosion from the bar clamps. What I'm going to do, I'm going to scrape this off and I'm going to send it through the planer to get to my final width. So the initial cut on this was one and five eighths inch thick and I actually made that a little bit wider than that. And I've got to take this down to one and a half inches. Okay, next step in the process is I'm going to be cutting this distance from an inch and a half down to inch and one eighth. And you'll see this is the contrast that you have to have in between the keys. So I'm glad I went ahead and bought that black dyed veneer versus the initial walnut veneer that I had started with. So you're supposed to rip this part. This is waste. And then you're supposed to save this for the spacers in between the keys. Okay, so like I said, I gotta take this final dimension, which is an inch and a half now, I'm gonna rip that to one and one eighth. And I got the saw set up. That's a good move, Bob. Okay, just wanted to double check for square there. <laughs> all right. This thing needs to be square all the way around. Got my push block, got my dust collector. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other pieces. Okay, so here's the tricky part. You got to make these cuts, these 45 degree cuts, and these are supposed to fit together like this. Now these are, these two pieces are scraps from my buddy who made these, and I've been experimenting also. Um, now the article and the plans call for to doing this on the table saw and I'm going to try to do it on my shaper instead. So I've got this router bit. It's a 45 degree bevel cut on a on my router table here and I'm going to go ahead and cut that but the bottom part of this is only three-eighths of an inch. That's only three-eighths of an inch so that's going to make a little dado in here, and then I'm going to try to clean that up on the table saw. Okay, so I just ran this across the uh, router table, and this thin edge needs to go down. Be uh, mindful of that. And what I did, I don't have a miter gauge on my sliding uh, on my router table here, so I made a block to use as a miter fence, and I put a piece of sandpaper on here because during my test cuts, this was tending to slip out like this. And I also keep these at a longer length. I ended up cutting a little bit of this off because there was a defect on this piece of the wood. But, um, you know, from there, I clamp it on here, making sure everything's square. And I did have to adjust a little bit this height. If you have it at the wrong height, I was getting a little bit of like a big burr coming out there. And what I did, I, this is too much of a cut to do all at one time. So I took three or four smaller passes and then one final pass to make that cut. All right, so let's, let's 
show you how I did that. And this is probably the hardest part of the entire project, getting these, uh, these particular cuts just right. Like I said, the plans call for this to be done on the table saw. But it's you got to get that blade meeting perfectly at the 45 and the 90. Um, so I'm going to do it this way. Let me show you how I did that. So that's that cut. I'm really not crazy about that burning in here. That might affect gluing. I'm going to have to touch that up with sandpaper. And then I'm going to set the table saw to cut off this little notch. And I'm going to do that on each of these pieces. Okay, let's, uh, let's try the white ones. Looks good. I got a nice clean edge there and it's nice and square. It's nice and square there. That's critical. Okay, so, well, first of all, hey, if you haven't seen this crosscut sled on some of my previous episodes, uh, make sure you tune that in. I'll leave a link to that at the uh, end of this video. Uh, so the next thing I want to do, and I've already set this up and I made a couple test cuts. I've set it so I got a straight line right here. So just make sure this is at 90 degrees and sneak up on that little piece right there. And I think this is the safest way to do this. You get these little pieces here that will not be trapped. And you get a nice straight cut there. Be real careful, these are small pieces. Make sure this piece is tight against your stop block. Now my buddy was doing this, he was doing a knot on a crosscut sled but a miter gauge with a piece of wood on there. And what was happening with him, he said these things were flying out all over the place. Uh, they were like acting like little bullets. So I think the, a good way to do it is on a sled because this is a little bit wider than the kerf of the blade and uh, that'll prevent that from happening. Ruh row, I actually did screw up. <laughs> oh well. Hey, when I made the uh, the miter cut on all these pieces, I put the miter cut on the wrong side. So I actually just trimmed all these up and I ran this one down, but you got to make sure you've got a, the thin strip here and a thin strip here in order for this to line up. Okay, just to put a finer point on that, what I did originally, I had, I put the, thin side down on both of them and rounded it. And when you do the brown keys, you gotta do that. So if I had read the directions, it's very clear in section eight that where you put the black line in relation to the two different uh, keys. Oh well, um, I ended up cutting three eighths of an inch off 
and these were a little bit long anyway so I'm going to be very close to the final dimension of length. So here's how it looks so far. Next thing I got to do is cut each of the pieces to length and then I have to make those uh, end, end pieces but you can see the illusion now without any of those end keys in there. The plans call for the keys, the white keys to be three and three eighths. So I'm gonna, for now, make them all the same length at three and a half. Okay, so the drawing calls for these keys to be five and an eighth, and because of that little screw up I did here, I um, measured these to the longest one, I'm sorry, the shortest one that I have is just about five inches. So I'm gonna lose a little bit more than an eighth an inch on the final product. Inconsequential. <laughs> The plan calls for two end caps. This one's three quarters of an inch, and this one is three eighths. So I'm going to cut that now on the table saw. this length it's eight and a half inches and then I'm going to do a similar piece but it's going to be three eighths of an inch so I'm going to have to cut this one in part of this in half okay this is going to be the, for the three eighths inch space here I use my, uh, my little measuring stick Let's see how this goes okay I'm going to cut the the two end caps and these spacers to length now but you can see how this is a uh, this is coming up, coming about. You got to be careful here. There are three pieces that are called the long white keys, and they are an eighth, eight and an eighth inch. And I'm just going to measure that to the same distance because uh, this dimension is slightly less than eight inches here. So I'm going to just cut these to length now. So this is the second glue up. Again, I just tuck these into uh, the corner so I can do four different glue ups at once. And then I also glued these two sub assemblies together. So by doing this type of strategy, I save myself a ton of time versus the strategy that the uh, article said. So this is going to be the third glue up of uh, one, two, three, four, and I'll be done with that and then I can start sanding it. And that's what the third glue up looks like. Just put a couple F-style clamps on there. And um, yeah, so this is coming along pretty good. Can't wait to start doing the sanding on it.
so if you look close you got little tiny gaps and I'm going to fill those with a combination of uh, glue and some sawdust wasn't easy to get all these perfect I did have to hand fit some of these did a little sanding to try to get them as close as I could but I think this little bit of filler is going to blend right in. Next thing I'm going to do, once this is dry in an hour or so, I'm going to take this over to the table saw and clean up this edge. Even though I was using that glue, that glue board, it's still not perfect here. So I'm just going to have to clean up both sides of this. And, and I'm going to round the edges just a little bit after I do that. Okay, I've got the saw set up. And I got to make these these lines nice and straight and square to the end here. If you got a saw stop and you get these little tiny pieces, these tend to go down inside the dust tube and clog it up. So if, uh, be real cautious of that. And don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> and knock these edges. The belt sander left a little bit of a wave on the top of the board. And so I brought it over to my buddy's house and we used his wide belt sander uh, to make the top and the bottom perfectly flat and parallel. This is a great tool. Okay, after we sanded it over at my buddy's house and I sanded it again, I got all those little tiny cracks filled with some sawdust and glue, and now it's time to put the finish on. Okay, here's my favorite part of the project. It's looking really good. It's parallel on both sides. I got rid of all the divots, and it's time to put on the finish. I'm going to put on this lemony stuff, lemony uh, lemon oil wax that I put on my charcuterie boards, the uh, pizza boards that I did last year. And this really pops that grain. And, uh, you know, all the frequent users of my channel know this is my favorite part. I always call this the money shot. So I'm going to I'm gonna put a couple different coats of this on here. This has this beautiful smell to it. Like I said, it's, it's lemony. I'm going to let this soak in. I'll rub that in a little bit more. Turn it around, do the same thing. And uh, so I'm going to be back with you in a couple minutes once this is done and I'll show you the finished project. Okay, so talk, talk. you might have noticed I didn't have any video on the end cap on the keys. I did that on the table saw using the waste block on the that 3 8 inch that I cut off the main glue up and then I cut the bevels on the uh, router table.